Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here, and in today's video I will be reacting to Matt Miller mocking quarterback Anthony Richardson to the Washington Commanders with 16th pick in the first round. I'll also talk about the news that Dan Snyder is selling one of his DC homes. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content super close to 11,000 subscribers. So please help me get there. It takes one second and it's free. Also with that like button and the notification at button as well. Okay, so let's start with the Anthony Richardson talk. I'm going to try to do one of these videos once a week, kind of just reacting to a media member's mock draft for the Washington Commanders. So Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, Matt Miller, Daniel Jeremiah, any of those, I'll just react to them just because it's a good talking point and they're all usually a little bit different. So Matt Miller works for ESPN for the last, you know, he's been working there for the last couple of years. And, you know, he's gotten bigger and bigger as a, you know, draft guy. So let's read what he had uh, had to say. So uh, he picks Anthony Richardson for the Commanders QB out of Florida. The quarterback situation in Washington is less than ideal with Taylor Heineke hitting free agency and Carson Wentz no longer a viable starting option. The Commanders did draft Sam Howell in the fifth round of the 2022 draft, but rarely do day three quarterbacks become franchise passers. With Richardson on the board, this is a pick that makes the most sense. He is not a finished product after starting just 13 games in college, but his highs are incredibly high, and he has the highest ceiling of this quarterback class. If he can put everything together, or if he can put everything together, the six foot four, 232 pound Richardson has the strongest arm of the class two and pairs that with game changing running ability. The downside, a nine interception to just 17 touchdown passes in 2022 and a QBR of 71.2 shows that Richardson's accuracy needs work before he's a complete passer. He, he completed just 54.7% of his throws over his career. So you obviously, this is the, the, the you know biggest boomer bust prospect in this year's class, I mean, he's you know very young, six foot four, two hundred thirty-two pounds. He has the size, he has the build you want in a quarterback. He's quick and he has a great arm, but he's also got some you know concerning things like he talked about limited starting uh, or amount of starts he's had. Only thirteen in college is extremely concerning. The stats don't look great. The completion percentage doesn't look good. He's inaccurate at times, but again, he's got that potential. So let's just look at his stats. 2020, one for two. and He threw two passes, and one was a touchdown, and one was an interception. Next year, six touchdowns, five interceptions. Kind of worth, what, two starts-ish? And then in 2022, I guess started, what, like 11 games or something? And had a completion percentage of about 54%. 17 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, got sacked 13 times. And then rushing-wise, he had 654 rushes for 9 touchdowns. So he's definitely a, a, a threat um, as a runner, probably the you know best running threat in this class. I mean, Ant or not, uh, Bryce Young's pretty quick, but he doesn't rely on his legs that much. But he can do it. And then, you know, C.J. Stroud is quick, but he doesn't use his legs that much either. So... And for me, first of all, I, if the commanders love a quarterback, then absolutely take one at 16. Or if you have to trade up a little bit, go ahead and take one. But for me, this is kind of a lame duck year. I don't, you know, it's very likely that Ron Rivera and company, they're not back in 2024 because of the new ownership, unless they have a great year this year. I'd rather the new regime come in and pick the quarterback, whether that's a veteran, whether that's sticking with Sam Howell, or whether that's a rookie. Someone like Anthony Richardson is going to be very, very polarizing. I mean, already amongst fans, and I bet you amongst NFL media and NFL scouts, general managers, coaches, he's going to be very, very polarizing. He probably is already very polarizing in these you know, front offices. And there's going to be some teams that absolutely love him and are like, okay, he's the number one quarterback in this class, maybe number two. And there's going to be some guys... Some front offices that think he's like a third round pick or that they just don't want to draft him. And that, in you know, for me, that's a little bit risky because let's say this regime loves him. They absolutely love Anthony Richardson and he sits out the, for a year basically because it's, you know, kind of a redshirt year. He's going to need that, uh, you know, to sit behind someone, maybe Hal or Heineke, but probably Hal. 
But, you know, it just, it's just very risky. And then if you, ha- you know, let's say he doesn't play at all his rookie year, maybe plays a couple games like Trey Lance does in his, did in his rookie year. Well, if you bring a new regime, who knows if they liked Anthony Richardson? And if they didn't, then it's kind of a wasted pick. And you either, one, force their hand, or two, they're going to move on from him. And they're, you know, you basically wasted a first round pick where you could have drafted a tackle or a cornerback where cornerbacks and tackles are more consensus than, let's say, a quarterback where there's so many varying opinions on quarterbacks. And that's just why I personally would pass on quarterbacks this year in the first four or five rounds. Do I mind if we take one in the sixth, seventh round? No, because we're probably going to need, we're probably going to sign a veteran, whether that's Heineke, Brissett, or some or Bridgewater, or someone like that. And we're going to need to bring someone else in, whether that's, you know, I guess keeping Jake Fromm, promoting him to the active roster once the season starts, or signing it on draft free agent, who knows. But they're probably going to need another quarterback, maybe a younger guy. And, you know, Jaron Hall or whatever his name is from BYU could be an option in the later rounds. Someone like that. I wouldn't mind, but in the first few rounds, I just don't know if you want to risk that much on a QB when, you know, you're going to have a probably a new regime next year, and that kind of makes sense for Ron Rivera too. Like, he wants to win now, and a QB like Anthony Richardson, who's a project, isn't going to help him do that. He's not going to help him do that. And again, I I do like the idea of Anthony Richardson because you don't want to draft these safe quarterbacks in the first round where... Maybe they have a little bit of a higher floor, but they don't have a high ceiling, kind of like Mac Jones. It's just like, how far can you really get with him? But someone like Anthony Richardson, he's got a lot of talent, Josh Allen type talent, but he's also got a very, very, very low floor. Like he's got to be with the real, like he's one of those guys where he's got to be in the perfect situation, perfect coaches, perfect weapons, perfect offensive line, or at least close to perfect as close to perfect as you can get he's he needs to be in a very good situation like josh allen got developed properly by brian brian dayball and sean mcdermott had some good weapons they traded for digs and you just have to have that uh you know infrastructure in place and washington currently they have some good receivers they have some good running backs but the offensive line isn't great i don't really know if we have the proper coaches to develop him that remains to be seen especially you know, depending on what we do at offensive coordinator, if we bring in Eric Bieniemy, I feel a little bit better about that. And you know, a lot of people compare Anthony Richardson to Cam Newton a little bit. Well, Ron Rivera did draft Cam Newton with the number one overall pick, but I just think I I rather not draft a QB in the first round this year. And I think Ron Rivera kind of feels the same way for different reasons, just because he's coaching for his job. And my thought is I just want the next regime to pick the quarterback. But if they absolutely love a quarterback or someone falls to them, they didn't think would fall to them, I, I would be I wouldn't be super upset if they drafted Richardson or Stroud if he somehow fell Levis. I don't know, but Richardson's definitely boomer bust, but you gotta take shots in this league, so I wouldn't mind it. And I haven't watched any film on him and I understand, you know, the knocks on him. He hasn't played you know, done well in any big game many big games. His ratio was not good this year in accuracies, but he also has a lot of talent. So that's just something. Yeah, he's very, very polarizing. There's either people who love him or people who hate him. And I'm kind of in the middle. I just need to watch more tape. But I'm kind of steadfast on probably not drafting a quarterback this year for the commanders. That's that's just my take. And then the Dan Snyder thing. So Dan Snyder's uh, Potomac Estate is on the market for uh, $49 million, which would be a record sale in the D.C. area. The current record was set by himself, Dan Snyder. He bought his Alexandria Estate for $48 million in 2021. So, of course, he wants to break his own record. But, I mean, I think, obviously, this is somewhat good news. The thing is, he still has, I believe, another place, and it's in Alexandria. So, him selling one of them is definitely more towards good news than bad news, but I don't know how, it could just be, you know, he has two houses and he doesn't need both of them, or it could be, okay, he's preparing to leave, maybe go overseas, and he wants one house in the U.S. and then one outside or multiple outside, so, I mean, this is definitely more towards good news and bad news for sure, and, you know, I just, it's leaning, leaning more and more towards a full sale but again 
Like I said in the live stream yesterday with Juan, I'm not going to believe it until I see it because you know how Dan Snyder is, how petty he is, and how he can just change his mind in one second. So I'm really hoping this, you know, I mean, this means good news, and I do think it does, and I'm just hoping we can f hear about him, you know, selling. Like, I don't need to hear, like, oh, Jeff Bezos is buying the Commanders, like, this week. Like, that would be great, but if I could hear, like, okay, Dan Snyder is going to fully sell the team, and this week he's going to, uh, you know, have a final offer, whatever, let people put in their final offers for the team. I would be ecstatic if that happens. That means he's guaranteed selling, and now it's just a matter of who he is selling to. As there's Jeff Bezos, Harris, there's some other guys as well, combination of Jeff Bezos and uh, Jay-Z. So that's just something that I just want to get that out of the way, just hear that he's fully selling the team. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace, guys.